direct write-off, I'm just going to briefly go over this because this is not really recommended by GAP, but you still have to know that some of the small businesses uses this to take care of uncollectibles. So up to now, what, what I covered so far is allowance method. Allowance means that we make an estimation, set a pool of allowances for uncollectibles up front. So the main difference between this allowance method and direct write-off is that this method here do not do an estimation before. Okay, meaning that it only writes off the accounts for Andrews and for Jones. Remember, these are the two bad debt accounts. They write it off directly when they deemed, when companies deemed as these accounts as uncollectible accounts receivables. So they do not have this first estimation entry. They start from here, writing off, which is why it's called direct write-off method. Okay, so some of the small businesses, because making all these journal entries in a way is a little bit more costly for them. So they would just directly write off Andrews and Jones, the bad debt accounts, whenever they determine that these are the accounts that pass due, and then consider these as uncollectible account expense. Okay, so the difference is, is that they don't have this entry, and also for this write-off entry, they're not using an allowance pool. They just use uncollectible account expense debited and credit accounts receivables. So the problem for this, this method, the reason why GAAP is not recommending it, is because notice that the time frame here, usually some of the accounts, because credit sales or credit service revenue has been constantly happening in the business on a daily basis, when it reaches the end of the year, if some of the accounts, some of the sales has been made close to November or December, when we realize it's past due, oftentimes it's the following accounting period. Okay, so meaning that these accounts receivables are related to the sales and service revenue that happened last year, 2014, but we only determine them as past due 2015. Okay, so these crosses to different accounting periods and would violate one of the principles that we talked about, we have been talking about a lot, matching principle, because this uncollectible account expense should have been identified last year. It relates to last year's sales revenue or service revenue, but we only wait until it's past due to identify this. So there's a matching principle violation here. There's also accounts receivable overstatement for last year. Okay, under this method here, if we estimate uncollectible expense up front, Andrews and Jones accounts, even though it's bad debt, it will be rep the uncollectible expense will be recognized in 2014 instead of 2015. Okay, but under direct write-off, they don't do this estimation. They just recognize it as it happens. When we realize there's bad debt customers, then we write them off. We don't do a pool of estimation based on prior year's experience. So it doesn't align with conservatism principle, it doesn't align with matching principle. And also, if we look at 2014's financial statement, you will find accounts receivables overstated because these two accounts was not being was not being wrote off earlier. Okay, so direct write-off, the reason why we're not using it is because